morning and welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church in Washington, Connecticut for our Sunday morning worship on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter. We invite you to be active participants in this worship. You can get a digital copy of the bulletin either from a link in Facebook or a link on our Facebook page um, or in the e-blast that was sent on Friday. If you don't have access to that, all you need is the prayer book and the hymnal. The hymns are on the board and the numbers of the right to it begins on page 355. But before we start our opening hymn, I ask you to, to join us in saying a prayer for the medical professionals uh, who, who, and first responders whose lives have been at risk during this pandemic. Together, let us pray. Sanctify, O Lord, those whom you have called to the study and practice of the arts of healing and to the prevention of disease and pain. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit that by their ministries, the health of the community may be promoted and your creation glorified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Join us in singing the opening hymn number 292. are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse now the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
with you? Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
morning, Jesus promises his followers that those who love him will be guided by the Holy Spirit and will also see him. The evangelist presents Jesus in his final conversation with his disciples. Soon he will be taken away from them by death. But God will send another counselor. The world, that is the godless society, cannot receive the spirit of truth, nor come to perceive Jesus as still living. Yet those who follow the commandments of love will find new life in intimate association with Jesus and the Father. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him, because he abides in you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The first epistle of St. Peter, the third chapter, beginning with the 15th, boy, 15th verse. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you, an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. The author of 1 Peter encourages listeners, those, those early first Christians, to always be ready to explain their faith to others with gentleness and reverence, and not with the righteous self-assurance that one hears from most Christians today, if you dare to ask them what they actually believe. And yet with church attendance precipitously declining the last many decades throughout all denominations, and a whole generation growing up as, as having no religion at all, Perhaps we need to re-examine how it is we share our faith. Perhaps we need to try a new approach, uh, the one suggested here by Peter, perhaps, that we explain to others the hope that is within us in, with gentleness and reverence. So what would you say? What would you say if someone asked you to explain the hope that is within you? Because I fear that many of us would struggle to be able to adequately describe our faith. That most of us cannot articul uh, clearly articulate what it is we believe, or why we believe, or, or even what it is that draws us to church week after week. And in this time of pandemic, why is it so important that we continue to hold services here at least online, so that we can all gather together in some way or other. Why, why don't we just all stay home until this is all over and gather again? What does it mean to be the church in this time of pandemic? Why are we still gathering? Why are we here? Why are you watching this service online? What draws you to do this? Is going to church only some childhood habit of ours that we never gave up? Is that why we're here? Or do we come to church only out of a sense of guilt or, or obligation? Are we just trying to fulfill the fourth commandment to keep the Sabbath day holy? Or is there something more? Is it the fellowship of this congregation? 
Is it the sense of family, of community, a, a sense of belonging to something larger than ourselves that draws us together week after week? Is that why we're here? We all need, I believe, a sense of belonging. No man is an island unto himself. We all need uh, to, to feel a part of something larger than ourselves. Is that the pull for coming to church each week? And how would you explain that to others? How would you explain the hope that is within you? Maybe it's the beauty of worship here, the beauty of this building, the wonderful music, or the challenging sermons. Is that why you're watching? For there is in humanity, I think, uh, an inherent longing to acknowledge in our lives that, that there is some force, some power, something greater than ourselves that holds the world together, that gives our existence meaning, that creates life and makes sense of death. Interestingly, some form of religion has existed among every culture in every place at all times throughout history. There is some basic human need to acknowledge God's presence and power in our lives. So I said, for many of us, I suspect, we long to gather together to worship on Sunday to acknowledge that reality. And the services here at St. John's may just meet that need for us. It may satisfy those religious yearnings. It may encourage and even inspire us in that haunting by a deep-seated sense of awe and wonder in life. Is that why we're here? Or maybe you just come to hear the scriptures. Maybe you watch this service to hear those ancient and powerful stories long held sacred by so many people for so many centuries, for millennia. Maybe you have come to be taught or challenged by them. Perhaps you're coming here to learn more about your faith, about the history of the Christian church, about what it is we believe. Or that you bring your children here to learn the beloved stories that you learned as a child. Stories that our culture values still. That's why we usually have adult classes and Lenten series, although they're usually very sparsely attended. But they are there to aid us all in our Christian understanding to aid us all in that lifelong journey of education that all Christians should be involved in at all times. Is that why you're here? Or do we simply come to feel a part of a group of dedicated people who are serving the poor and needy in the world, who, who care about this community, who want to make the world a better place for our children? Is that why we come? Are we coming here as a place to, to give back to the community? Coming here is a place to serve those in need, to live out our Christian principles. Perhaps what draws us here week after week is the desire to be part of all of that, to feel that we are contributing and making a difference in the world. Or perhaps you just come here for yourself, for your own personal and emotional and psychological needs, for some uninterrupted moments in your week for some time to reflect and to think, a time to cry or to pray or to light a candle for a friend, a time to be inspired or to hope. For many, St. John's may be the only quiet sanctuary of self-reflection that we have in our busy lives, a tranquil moment in the chaos of the world outside, a time and place simply to be still, to feel the closeness of God, and to be at peace with the world. But whatever it is that draws you here, whatever it is that compels you to come to church week after week, and it may well be these are a combination of other factors, we all need to know what it is that draws us here. We all need to be able to understand why we're here and be able to put it into words so that we can share that part of ourselves with others so that we can always be ready to make a defense to anyone who demands from us an accounting of the hope that is within us with gentleness and reverence. Why is it that before the pandemic, back in the old days when things were normal, on Monday mornings at work, we would all be so willing to talk about everything that happened over the weekend in our lives, except what happened at church? 
We are usually more willing to go on and on about our families, about the activities of our kids, how our favorite sports teams fare. We are more likely to talk about our sex lives with one another than to talk about the experiences we've had in church. To tell others about the mystery and the awe and the wonder that we experience in worship. And we have got to get over that as Episcopalians. For the sake of others. For the sake of the world. I'm not asking you to go stand on a street corner and preach to strangers. I'm asking you to self-righteously declare that, no, I'm not asking you to self-righteously declare that we have all the answers, or to proselytize or convert your friends. I am simply asking all of us to be able and willing to share our own stories and experiences and feelings about church, about this congregation, to share them with our friends and our family members, to tell them, to explain to them, to articulate for them what it is that draws us back here again and again, to make a defense of the hope that is within us with gentleness and reverence. Because if there is, and there obviously is, something that draws us here again and again, then that something will perhaps draw others as well. But only, only if they know about it. And they will only know about what goes on here if we talk about it to others. We must be able to invite and encourage our friends, our family members, our neighbors, our colleagues at work to come and experience what we've experienced here without fear that we're trying to convince them of anything other than the joy of our own personal encounters here. So stop, seriously. And think for a moment about what it is that draws you to church week after week. And think about your friends, who amongst them are a part of a religious congregation and who are not. And if you don't know, ask them. Ask them that simple question. Do you have a church family? It's an important question in this time of pandemic. And that's not a threatening or prying question. That's a caring and concerned question. Telling someone that they are welcome to come here if they wish. All are welcome here. We have fun here. We learn stuff here. Come and experience it and share the exciting things that happen in our community. Church planters, those who start new congregations, have discovered that 80% of the unchurched people in this country, and there are many, many unchurched people in our communities, 80% of them say that they would go to church if only someone invited them. So do you know why you're here? Can you express it in words? Can you talk about it with others? What it feels like to be a part of this congregation? And have you told anyone lately? For as St. Peter reminds us, we must always be ready to make a defense of the hope that is within us with gentleness and reverence. Amen. Let us then stand together and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We offer our prayers and thanksgivings to God now, the God who in the midst of our trials and adversity gives us the faith to endure. Responding, hear us, O risen Christ. As we reflect on what we miss the most in this time of physical distancing and reimagine the body of Christ of being the church, let us pray for Suhilio, Archbishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Bartholomew, Patriarch of Constantinople, Francis, Bishop of Rome, Michael, our presiding bishop, Ian and Laura, our bishops, and all members of this congregation, giving special thanks for all who give of their time, talent, and treasure for the ministry of Christ in this church, in our diocese, and throughout the world. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. Remembering also Antonio Gutierrez, Secretary General of the United Nations, Donald, our President, Ned, our Governor, James, the First Selectman of the Town of Washington, and the members of the Congress and the Courts, and for all who exercise leadership in government, that we may follow the holy commandments of the Lord's truth and Jesus' eternal gift of love as pathways to wholeness and health. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. For all our collaborative community efforts responding to the needs of the poor and marginalized in our towns and villages, like yesterday's food drive, for our health care workers, first responders, teachers, and service providers, and for our renewed understanding of essential workers and true heroes, that we may give honor to those considered least in our society knowing that Jesus reveals the divine will through their lives and in the course of their abiding faithfulness. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. We pray for the sick, that they may be comforted in their times of need, derive strength from the prayers of others, and be supported by the presence of family and friends. We pray especially for all suffering from the COVID-19 virus, as well as all those for whom our prayers are asked, remembering especially Ed and Zella White, Lorna Kramer, Carolyn Thompson, Katie Coe, Aline Hearn, Dick and Connie Taylor, Jay LaFleur in hospice care, the staff and clients at Aspetuck Animal Hospital in Marbledale, and all who are housebound, remembering especially Janet Chenery in Kentucky. We pray with thanksgiving for the recovery this week of Bob Coles. And we pray for those who tend to the needs of the sick and suffering, that they may be renewed by God's love, and that they minister from the strength of God's of Christ's healing power and reveal the light of hope that never fades away, that we may be a community of joyous believers, bearing one another's burdens, forgiving each other's sins, responding to the needs of all, so that the world may see and know that all things are being made new through the risen one. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. As we continue to lean into the spiritual grace, always present in the outward and visible sacraments of the Church, we give thanks for this Eucharistic meal, where Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us and invites us to share in heaven's feast for the risen Lord is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. Honoring the lives of those who have died from COVID-19 and all the faithful departed, whose every breath was lived in response to God's promises, let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. As adopted children of Jesus through our passage in the waters of baptism, let us continue our prayers and thanksgiving praying together the prayer in the midst of pandemic. Heavenly Father, 
Hear our prayer. May we who are merely inconvenienced at this time remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those who are most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or paying their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children while the schools are closed remember those who have no such options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing money in a tumult of the economic market remember those who have no savings at all. May we who must self-quarantine at home remember those who have no homes. And finally, as fear grips our nation, let us choose love during this time of pandemic when we cannot physically wrap our arms around one another. Let us find other ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors and our communities. Amen. Let us then confess our sins to God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord then grant unto each of you the absolution and remission of all your sins, but also time for true repentance and amendment of life and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, John. Peace, Marguerite. Peace, Tom. And peace to all of you watching at home. The church goes on. Our ministry is still carried out. We invite you to be active participants, not only in the worship, but in the mission of this parish. A reminder of activities coming up today, again, at 12 noon on Zoom. Uh, we will gather together as a congregation in a sort of a virtual coffee hour or brunch after church, as we call it. Um, so follow up and, and join and let us know how you're doing. Hear each other's voices, see each other's faces and talk about our lives and ministries and the faith that is in us. A reminder that on Monday morning again, I'll send out some film uh, suggestions for you. I do encourage you, now that you've binge-watched all your favorite shows, to look at some of these films and chat amongst yourselves about them. Uh, Wednesday night is story time. If you missed last week's storytelling uh, on Saint James, about St. James Episcopal Church in Great Barrington, Look for it on the YouTube page um, and listen to it. It's about a church that struggles without having a building, um, which feels familiar to a lot of us these days. Um, this week's story is, is Agnes of Macedonia. It's somebody you know, but not by that name. And I invite and encourage you to, to, to hear her story again. Uh, thanks to all those who contributed and helped with the food drive yesterday at First Congregational Church. The religious communities in Washington are working together. Um, we're at, we had a conference call with the clergy and lay leaders this week, and we will do it again in another couple of weeks. As we imagine, we will have to do food drives perhaps as often as once a month. We're also working together with the Red Cross about organizing the blood drive and waiting for them to get back to us again um, and other ways that we might serve the community. Uh, we'll be back next week for Sunday morning worship. And if you're really looking for things to do, read some of the books that are being read by groups in our parish. A Year of Wonders by Geraldine Brooks is a wonderful story, very relevant to this time of pandemic. Um, we've delayed the reading gathering uh, uh, to the end of June because some people ordered the book and it's taking longer to get to them. So you've got plenty of time and it's beautifully written. She won the Pulitzer Prize uh, a few years before that. And also we're reading Amy Julia Becker's uh, White Picket Fences with the hope that everyone will read the book. And this is again being publicized by all the religious congregations in Washington, um, that she'll come and talk to us in the days ahead uh, when things feel safer. And that reminds me that this Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, 
I will do a fireside chat about what the days ahead may look like. People are asking, when are we coming back to church? What is it going? What is it going to look like? What is the governor saying? What is the CDC saying? And I'll talk some about that, um, especially as the governor's "stay home, stay safe" expires on Tuesday night. Um, what's planned for the next phase? So watch for that on the Facebook page live. Um, also. Uh, click on the prayer list that there are particular current concerns you have to, to let us pray for them, some privately, some publicly, but we're glad to, to hold up uh, those who are concerned to you, so add those prayers to our list. And finally, don't forget to keep up your offerings, donations, and, and pledges as the church continues in this time of pandemic. Walk in love, as Christ indeed loves us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God.